Vamos a analizar más cuestiones, vamos a seguir analizando este tres y Adelas de la mano de Eric Keto, astrofísico del Observatorio Astrofísico Smith Sonian. Hi Eric, uh, thanks for being here in Elthus TV. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, hello, uh, thanks for having me. I was delighted to see my friend and colleague Avi Loeb on the uh, show just before me. I would like to ask you about uh, this, Eric. Uh, what do you think about uh, the AB Loeb and uh, all his uh, investigation about this uh, three atlas? Um, well, Avi Loeb and I work together, and of course, um, we agree on everything except what we don't. Uh, but uh, in, in general, I think it's uh, worthwhile asking these questions. Um, And the, we can also ask uh, questions, and everybody is, you know, if, if there is a natural physical explanation for, for these uh, anomalies that, that Avi Loeb pointed out, and we haven't come to the uh, uh, complete answer on those. What is your opinion about uh, these three Ayadras? Uh, why is different, uh, for example, uh, from the Chuai Borisov? Um, In just in physical terms, the three I atlas is uh, unusually rich in uh, volatiles like uh, water, uh, ice, frozen water, and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. A normal comet would have about 50% of its mass in carbon, carbon and silica grains. And this comet shows less evidence for um, Uh, emissions from carbon and, gr and grains. So it's possible that it uh, certainly came from another um, planetary system and it may have been ejected at an early stage before the um, surface of the comet was processed by many orbits around its star. So it may represent a, um, a, a good example of pristine material from uh, another um, planetary system and we don't have um, this sort of comet in our solar system that is as close as this one. There are comets that are orbiting far away from the sun that may have similar characteristics, but this one was um, good enough to come by so we can study it in more detail. So it's in general it's of great interest to the astronomy community. There is a lot of uh, interest. Uh, there is uh, a lot of hi hypotheses. Uh, what do you think about uh, the people who talk about a stellar ejection, a binary system, or an interstellar debris? Uh, what do you think about the, all the hypotheses about these uh, three atlas? Um, oh, sorry. Which which hypotheses? All uh, people who says uh, that it is an stellar ejection, an interstellar debris. Uh, what is your hypothesis about these three atlas? Yeah. Um, well, they're they're of course um, highly speculative, uh, but they're questions that are are worth considering. Um, my guess is it will probably turn out to be um, a comet, um, natural comet, um, but. We have to wait and find out. Wait, uh, we have to learn about these uh, three atlas. What lessons uh, could we learn about uh, these three atlas and for the scientific community in general? Um, well, as I said, it, it, well, first, it, first of all, it represents a, um, a comet from another planetary system, and um, we, we have. Uh, no information really about uh, comets and other planetary systems except for the ones that happen to um, come through our solar system and so far there's um, three or one one uh, possible asteroid and uh, uh, one comet two possible comets so so this is a great opportunity to learn about other planetary systems and as i said it it could be um, a comet that comes from a different stage in the formation of the planetary system than is uh, more easily observed in, in our solar system.
And Eric, uh, what are the technical challenges that you that you have that you face when observing an, an object uh, that is, uh, for example, so fast that like uh, three, these three atlas? Uh, what are the challenges you have to investigate about uh, these uh, phenomena? Well, comets are somewhat like people; they're all individuals. Um, however, they have common characteristics. Uh, but they're, they're more varied than some other astronomical objects. So every time we collect um, data on a collection of comets, we, we have averages and we have outliers. Um, and so we have to take that into account, that, uh, that there are um, un unusual comets that have uh, different kinds of anomalies that aren't completely explained and 3i atlas may have it's a little bit more um, gas rich than uh, typical solar system comets and so on so we have to fit those into our physical theories those um, those facts so um, the observations are um, we, we we have the uh, observatories and the assets that we have so we, we have to make the best use of those, but um, they're um, not limitations, really. And Eric, what can 3 Atlas teach us about the formation of planets and materials in other star systems? Um, well, it, it's um, uh, we, we can and we are um, collecting an inventory of the um, chemical composition of the comet uh, and that that's certainly one thing uh, and it's it would be so far it, it's it's nice to know that the formation processes in other planetary systems may be similar to uh, those that we infer from our own solar system so that's certainly um that's certainly of interest or if we were to find that they were different, that would also be of, of great interest. And uh, Eric, do you think uh, that in the future we will be able to send an interception proof to an object like this, uh, three Atlas? Uh, we could study better this, uh, for example, this three Atlas or uh, the Chuai Borisov. Yeah, it's it's possible. It depends upon the uh, amount of advanced warning that we have. Uh, for example, um, NASA did send a, um, a probe, the DART mission, to uh, collide with um, a nearby asteroid. Um, that asteroid was considerably closer to Earth than uh, 3i Atlas is, but nonetheless, it took one year for the probe to orbit around the sun and align itself uh, for the um, uh, rendezvous. So. Um, there are uh, large distances in space and the probes travel at uh, limited speed. So uh, it, it's certainly possible, um, but it would take some advanced planning. And Derek, uh, what, de what degree of consensus uh, do you have in the astronomical community? What is the consensus uh, in this moment about the, the three Atlas? Well, the consensus really is that uh, 3i Atlas is a, um, a natural natural comet. Now, um, and Avi Loeb has just a, a minute ago co commented on that, whether people are willing to ask questions, um, unusual questions, uh, speculative questions about its origin. But that, that's certainly the consensus. And uh, do you expect uh, some 4i in the future? Uh, do you think 3i Atlas uh, could be the last uh, like, like, like this? Do you expect an 4i in the future? No, the, um, uh, the planetary defense network um, was, was initiated by an act of Congress in 2005 and gave NASA a directive to identify 90% uh, of the asteroids and comets in near Earth orbit, um, now uh, greater than 140 meters. Now, this has um, 
allowed the construction of uh, four new observatories, um, one which came online in 2016. Um, the most recent came online just before the uh, discovery of the comet. That was the Vera Rubin Observatory. Uh, and there's um, another that's um, called FlyEye, which is built by the European Space Agency um, located in Italy. Um, that hasn't come online yet. But these capabilities are going to um, vastly expand our detection and inventory of all kinds of comets, including those from interstellar space. So we should expect many more of these events in the near future. And Eric, how could help this, uh, this three atlas, uh, how could help the, the scientific uh, community? Do you expect uh, more money, for example, for, for, for the future? Do, do I expect more what? A more, a more interest uh, for, for the people, for your work? Oh, I think so. I think um, as, uh, as uh, astronomy is really an observationally driven science, and as more discoveries, observational discoveries are made, there's more interest in studying uh, these objects theoretically. And so I think that will, um, th this is already generating a lot of interest. And when future observations discover more interstellar objects, this will, uh, this interest will definitely increase. There is a lot of uh, people talking about uh, his past uh, for, for the Earth. Uh, Elon Musk uh, was talking uh, in the last days about uh, this three atlas. Uh, he said it could obliterate a whole continent. Uh, what do you think about Elon Musk? Uh, I don't know. A lot of people talking about this three atlas. Uh, is it good or is it bad for the scientific community? Well, if it were to obliterate a continent, that would certainly be bad for the scientific community. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, the um, uh, Three Eye Atlas is, as, as Avi said, is, is is quite large compared to uh, most of the um, asteroids and comets that are in Earth crossing orbits from our own solar system. So, uh, it's a very unlikely event that um, this that there would be a collision, um, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, Elon Musk's statement seems rather um, general and certainly true, but I, I'm not sure the significance of it. Bueno, pues eh, a la espera de, de conocer más información sobre este tres y atlas, eh, Eric, thanks for being here with with us in Ocios TV. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.